Hey guys, we are Distractive Creations from Poland and this is a gameplay video from Ancestors Legacy, our upcoming real-time strategy that's going to be out in Q2 2018 for PC and Xbox One. Overwhelmed by the forces of the enemy, cut off from their ships, the Northmen had to escape. Those who did not retreat in time lost their lives or became captives. Once harsh invaders looking for prey, the Northmen suddenly became prey themselves. Luckily, they found salvation in a nearby forest, which became their temporary shelter. Here, they could catch a moment of respite from the pursuing Britons. Here, Jarl Ulf Ironbeard, who suffered injuries during the fight, could heal his wounds and recover. However, a new problem arose for the people of the North. In order to survive and to have any chance to join the rest of the expedition against Lindisfarne, they had to gather food and supplies. You made it! Good to see you alive, Jarl. We retreated as soon as they started winning the battle in the village. <laughs> Lost many good men in there, and many were taken hostage. Tonight, they dine in Valhalla. Look! It's our scout! He's back! I found food supplies. There is a farm and a hunting hut north from here. If we plunder both places, we will have food for many days. We cannot go. We need to patch our wounds. Take care of your warriors, brother. I'll get those supplies. Scammon! Keep it quiet. There's lots of enemies nearby. I'll be scouting the nearby area. Ancestors Legacy is a game where story actually matters. There are four nations here. Vikings, Slavs, British and Germans, each having their own story chapters, heavily inspired by historical events and revolving around real historical figures. Eyes on the enemy. Stop! Someone's coming! We can't let him alarm anyone! Let's make an ambush in one of those bushes. Don't get too close to the light, or they'll notice us. Move quickly. This particular Viking mission is a second one you will encounter in a single player part of the game. Uh, we wanted the entire campaign pacing to vary from slower paced and stealthy missions like this one, where each warrior matters, uh, even up to large scale confrontations with macroeconomy, resource management, base building, and, you know, lots of RDS mechanics that the genre fans should feel familiar with. Let's go. Now, the mission we're showing here is called Rebuilding Forces. It starts with the player gathering food resources and later on shifts towards freeing up our captured allies. All right, time to look for the hunting hut. We're going there fast. Over there, they're coming. Wait, someone's coming. Let's hide in the bushes and wait for them to pass. That's a strong squad. They've probably got a camp nearby. Our combat system bases on commitment. Once your squad engages in a fight, it's not always easy to break out, so make sure you plan your fights ahead. Look! An abandoned camp. It'll be a good place to rest. We've got eyes on the enemy. Move quickly. It seems like they're taking our allies somewhere. The environment can, of course, help you tremendously in sneaking past the enemies, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. 
For example, dense forest, apart from covering you, makes archers less effective, and mounted squads will not even be able to charge here at all. Now, if you want to min-max your squad effectiveness, you got to consider even more factors like weather, formations, hunger, morale, you name it. And of course, they're all visualized by nifty status icons right next to the squad's banner. Here's their jam. All the nearby units come from here. This military camp is an optional objective, and it's pretty much impossible to take it over now with our headcount, so... Patience. Okay, let's fast forward a little bit to the part of the mission where you end up gathering food and start wondering what about those allies of yours that got captured by the Brits? Time to get even. Move! Move! That's the order. Poor bastard. His squad must have wandered off when he retreated from the beach. It seems like they wanted to get some food and got killed by the Brits. Fool. Wait, there's a blood trail. Maybe someone survived. We need to find out. Whenever your squads are busy, they're running, fighting, I don't know, burning churches, you might want to try switching to the action camera. It is fully controllable, it looks pretty decent, and by the way, did you know that we have over 1600 animations in the entire game? No. It's Sven. It was his first raid. Bastards! He must have escaped the Christians. But they got him eventually. Maybe they went the other way. Okay, maybe the other direction? Since we want the single-player missions to feel comprehensible, usually the progress of your main objective unlocks further and tougher parts of the map. And by the way, this is one of the biggest maps that we're going to have in a game. Over there, they're coming. Mm, the Brits. They must have taken our brothers. We have to get them out. There's too many of them. We should eliminate one squad at a time. If we burn this village, someone will come to check what's going on. Okay, time for some diversive work. Uh, there's like six or seven guards in the first village, so I gotta pull them out of there to be able to free my allies. Singling out your opponent is obviously very effective, but again, we're just scratching the surface here. Sometimes, just being able to choose the type of your opponent is in itself enough to win a battle. The spearmen are ineffective against shield bearers, who are ineffective against the X-Men, who are ineffective against spears, you get the idea, right? And that is not even considering the combat navigation tactics like flanking, charging, but that is probably a topic for a separate video alone. Over there, they're coming! This won't work! We need to find something more flammable! Each destructible building has two bars above it. Red one indicates the process of getting a flame, and the green one indicates the overall condition, or so-called health. Uh, now, depending on factors like weather, number of attackers, and even the tier of the building, if it's a military one, burning it down can be either super quick, or in some cases, impossible. And yet again, there are still a couple surprises that you will come across, like, for example, peasants who can build wells, and they actually really use them in case of fire. Enemy spotted! This should do it! The enemy must have seen that! Prepare an ambush out there! On the double! Enemy spotted! Even though there's only a single squad left now, we still might want to be careful. Uh, when you're reckless, the squads might actually raise alarm and call for reinforcements, but luckily this is not happening this time. The peasants can reach the alarm tower. Great 
job! Two more to go! This camp looks like a good place to rest. Okay, now we're talking. Not only my spearman squad got replenished, but we also got a second one, archers. They will come in quite handy with their unique skills and of course the range of their attacks, but we also want to be extra careful because the archers cannot be replenished in this mission. Right, I can now finally start using some multi-squad strats that, as you can see, can make the fight shorter and minimize the chance of casualties. And I think it might have been also the first time that I used a stance toggle. Um, in aggressive stance, the squads automatically attack on sight, including charging. And in passive one, they can block charge, detect traps, and of course, there's a lot more details here which we won't cover in this video. Let's get there! This looks somewhat similar to the previous encounter, but I don't want to use diversion here. I'll just leave the other village alone. Not only my headcount is more significant now, but we're also fighting peasants here. Come on, they're no match against Viking warriors. Over there, they're coming. Another village. We can burn it down to draw their attention and free our brothers. First thing, I will hide the spearmen in the bushes, deliberately placing them on enemy's path, and I will activate a spear wall skill in case the peasants decide to charge at me. Then let's put the ranged squad behind spears and trigger the fight so that peasants get bound in combat with the spearmen. Next, I will navigate my archers for a better positioning to get behind the peasants and minimize the chance of friendly fire. Yes, you gotta take care of that. Last thing, I will use a covering skill to buff the spearmen, just in case the fight takes a bit longer than expected. Okay, uh, let's fast forward once again to the final stage of the mission where things get really interesting as we meet a new type of squad. The heroes, as we call them, they're one-man units and they can really spice things up. Here, some of my squads gained lots of experience, so let's talk leveling up. The first time you level up, and only then, you choose a specialization. That choice depends on the squad type, and also it's a commitment. You can't change the specialization later. It's an upstairs. Now, there are two ways we could go from here. Remember that strong military squad from way back? Now our chances are not so miserable, so you might want to try capturing it, but you also might try later with even more squads. The other way is towards the end of the mission, and since this video is already getting quite lengthy, without further ado... We're going there, fast! Don't shoot! I'm a Northman like you. I managed to escape. Where are the others? In the other camp. You'll need men to set them free, and you need to hurry up. The Brits want to set them on fire as an act of revenge. It's an upstairs. 
Right, I'm gonna set some simple control groups here for a start. As you can see, it's not that hard even using a gamepad. It's ready, archers. Spears, listen. Now, this is typically a perfect time to utilize the uber micro skills, which I happen to totally suck at, but still, let's try toggling the groups and multitask here as much as I can. What I want to do here is to clear the small patrols and hide one of my groups for now. Let's go there. Then I'm going to want to split the big group of enemies using sabotage, but still not wanting to get caught too bad. Let's hide over there. I'm the devil. That will get their attention. Spears, listen. As you can see, when squads are bound in combat, warriors are actually matched in pairs and they perform our designed and motion captured combat sequences. Wow. You know, I really thought that the lonely shieldman survivor would not make it. Uh, oh, and a uh, spoiler alert, you can't actually save those burning hostages here. Sorry. All hail the god who reigns supreme. It's good to have you all back. But who is this infidel coming with you? The name's Godric. Take me with you and I'll help you. I'll show you the nearby camps where you can get wood. We could go there and secure those resources. And here's where we meet Godric for the first time. He is British, but trust me, he has his own reasons to rebel against the current king. And also, it so happens he is the narrator of the campaign, telling the overall story from his perspective in between the missions. Spear. Cannot leave this camp for the Brits to retake! Good to see you. I saw a party of Brits heading in that direction. They want our wood. We need it to repair ships and build siege machines. We need to secure this wood camp at all costs. There are generally three types of resources in Ancestors Legacy. Food, wood and iron. The first one is used exclusively for squad's upkeep, while the other ones are spent on recruiting, building and upgrading of troops, settlements and sometimes even technology. Like for example, traps. That should be enough. I'll select my biggest squad to build a trap, as they will be faster. Spit. We're going there fast. Before I build it, however, let me first position my squads, considering the fact that I know where enemies will come from. So, archers in a hill, shieldmen in the bushes, and once the trap is done, the spears will once again form a defensive wall. There are two types of traps in our game. The cheaper, non-lethal one lowers enemy effectiveness, but the more expensive one instantly kills at least part of the affected squad. Spears! I'll be here any minute. Take position! They are coming! Prepare for battle! I will not show my back to the Christian scum! This is the final battle of this mission. 
We're seeing around 10 squads at once here, but that's not the cap, of course. For example, one of our multiplayer modes features 3 versus 3 matches with even up to 60 fully controllable squads battling it off at the same time, but more details later. We made it! All the Christians are dead! Alright, thanks for watching the video. If you want to see more, make sure you subscribe to our blah 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 blah. Just kidding. I hope it was informative and helps you guys make up your mind once the game comes out next year. And yes, there will be more videos, streams, whatnot. Okay, and by the way, here's a teaser of the next mission from this campaign. DC out. This is how I joined the Northmen in their raid on Lindisfarne. Ethel had held me captive for months, and that was my chance to get even. When Jarl Ulf Ironbeard regained his strength and we collected enough supplies, we could finally head on to join the rest of the expedition. However, the road to Lindisfarne was not an easy one. Every once in a while, we encountered Ethel's troops. Our supplies ran out faster than we were able to loot the surrounding villages. It was then that the scouts noticed an approaching caravan with food and weapons. We prepared an ambush, not expecting that someone else was preparing to attack it as well. <laughs>